One of the most important operations in signal processing at any dimensionality is the operation of convolution performed by LSI systems. This is the topic of this segment. LSI systems are uniquely defined by their impulse response, that is the response of the system to a two-dimensional impulse. Then the output of an LSI system to any input is simply the convolution of the input with the impulse response of the system. It will illustrate this two-dimensional convolution with an animated example. The impulse response of a system may be known, or it might have to be measured if the system is available, or it might have to be identified from the data collected by the system. In the second case, all we have to do is image a point source, a delta. And what we obtain is the response of the system to an impulse or the impulse response of the system. It is indeed a quite powerful result that is by simply imaging a point source, we're able to fully describe the system. That is, we're able to find the output of the system to any input. So for example, in characterizing the Hubble Space Telescope, this powerful telescope that provided so much useful information to the astronomical community, they pointed the telescope to a distant star in the dark sky, and the image they recorded is the 2D impulse response of the system, of the telescope. If the system is not available and all we are given is a blurred image, then we have to design and utilize algorithms that will identify this blur. And this is the topic we'll address at some high level during week seven. So let's discuss some convolutions. Let us derive now the expression for the two-dimensional convolution. Before we do that, let's observe that I can write any signal x as this infinite in general sum of shifted deltas. These deltas are shifted at all possible pixel locations in an image. And the height of the delta is just the value of the signal at the location of the delta, or the intensity values of these pixels. Pictorially, what this expression tells me is that if I have this toy signal here, let's say it has all these, it has only these four pixels with values, say one, two, three, four, right? Uh, you can clearly see that I can decompose this signal as a signal like this. So it's a delta at the origin with height two plus this signals signal that has a value one here plus this signal it only has a pixel here a delta here with value three plus finally this signal which has value four here at this location right so it's as simple as that now I can write this, this is a delta at the origin, so delta n1 and 2, the height of the delta is 2, and this 2 is clearly the value of my signal x at 0, 0. Okay? So similarly, I have the value of the signal at minus 1, 0, equal to 1, delta n1 plus 1 and 2, plus the value of the signal at location 1, 0, and that's the delta here, right? Plus the last signal is the value of the signal at 0, 1, and the delta is at location n1 and 2 minus 1. Okay? So I'll make use of this decomposition right away in deriving the convolution sum. So I have a system y is the output t i denote the system by t that has x as its input i'll use the above expression decomposition and write x as this sum k1 k2 all right so far, whatever I've written applies to any signal. Now, I know that the system is linear and spatially invariant. Now, the system 
accepts inputs that are function of a function of n so these deltas are the signals that the system recognizes operates on processes right while this x k 1 k 2 here since it's independent of n 1 and 2 acts as a weight as a constant right so the system sees this weighted sum of signals and since it's linear the output of the system so due to linearity the output of the system is going to be this sum here of the weighted individual outputs so the weights are k1 k2 and the output is t with delta shifted delta as the input all right and now recall we called the response of the system to a delta that's the impulse response we denote it by h and now since the system is specially invariant and the input is shifted the delta is shifted the output h is going to be shifted by the same amount so the output will be shifted by k1 k2 so this is the superposition sum the convolution the two-dimensional convolution of x with h and as i already mentioned uh, convolution commutes so this is equal to h convolved with x and you can obtain the second um, equation by substituting variables calling for example n1 minus k1 k1 prime and working the equations to confirm that indeed uh, the convolution is commutative let us now walk graphically through the convolution of two simple signals an x n1 and 2 shown here in blue and an h n1 and 2 shown in red if i look at the superposition sum which is highlighted here i see that i have to first rename the independent axis from n1 and 2 to k1 k2 i do it for x i also do it for h but for h i find the reflection of it with respect to the horizontal and the vertical axis due to this minus sign then i shift this reflected version by amounts n1 and 2 and for each shift i find the product of h with x and I sum up this product from minus infinity into infinity. So then for this particular shift, I'll find the output, the value of the output at n1 and 2. I have to perform all possible shifts in order to find y in all possible pixels loca pixel locations n1 and 2. So let's look at the steps that are um, imposed by this superposition sum uh, more specifically. So again, the first step is to rename the axis. So now we have x of k1, k2. And I do the same for h, but I reflect it with respect to the vertical and horizontal axis. So the reflected version is shown here. I put a 0 here to indicate that the shift, if I just reflect, is 0. So this is n1 and this is n2. I am going to now superimpose the signals, use them in the same graph um, as shown here. And then for this particular location, since H is shifted by 0, 0, right? I'm going to find the product of the two signals and I'll sum it up and I'll find the value of Y at 0, 0. We see that for this particular situation, the overlap is only at one pixel, the pixel here, which has changed color. So X is in blue, H is in red, and where they overlap, the, the, the color is purple, right? So in this particular case, there's overlap of only one pixel. And when I sum it up, uh, I have one, and therefore, this is the value of the output at the location 0, 0. The next shift is by 1 in the horizontal and 0 in the vertical direction. 
So this is the picture that you see here on the left. So the overlap now is at these two pixel locations. The shift is one zero, so I'm going to find the output at one zero. I carry out the multiplication and the summation, and I see that the value of y10 is equal to 3. I'm looking at the next possible shift, n1 equals 2, n2 equals 0. Therefore, I find the output at 2, 0. I see that now these two pixels overlap, and therefore, if I carry out the multiplication and the summation, right? I multiply the values of the pixels that overlap and this one, right, carries out the summation. There are only two in this particular case. I see that the value of the output at 2, 0 equals 5. Um, shift 3, 0. I do the same thing. The value of the output is equal to 3. The next location is here. The shift is 0, 1. And therefore, the overlap is at these two pixels. I see the value of the output is equal to 5. Shift 1, 1. I have four pixels overlapping. Therefore, the summation involves four products. And the value of this pixel is equal to 12. Shift to 1, 4 pixels overlapping, the value equals 16. Shift 3, 1, 2 pixels overlapping, the result of the summation equals 9. 0, 2, 1 pixel overlapping, that's the value of the output. 1, 2, 2 pixels overlapping, the result of the summation, 2, 2, the result of the summation equals 11, and finally, 3, 2, the result of the summation equals 6. Any other shift of H will result in no overlap between the blue and the red pixels between X and the shifted H, and therefore the value of Y is going to be equal to 0. So summarizing, we see that the result of the convolution of X with H is the signal Y as depicted here. An important observation is that the signal Y, the image Y, has larger support than any of the support of the signals X and H. One can show in general that if I have a signal that has support as shown here and determined by these points, P1, Q1, R1. And this signal is convolved with another signal that has support P2, as determined by these points, P2, Q2, R2 then the resulting signal from this 2D convolution will have support as shown here and determined by this point. This point is P1 plus P2. This is Q1 plus Q2. And this is R1 plus R2. So for the specific example we worked out, we see that this point is the 0, 0 point, this is the 2, 0 point, and this is the 0, 1 point. And similarly, this is the 0, 0 point, 1, 0, 0, 1. Therefore, the result of the convolution Y here has support 0, 0 plus 0, 0, 0, 0 is this point. Then this point is 2, 0, plus 1, 0, 3, 0. And this point up here is 1, 0, plus 1, 0, 
I'm sorry, 0, 1 plus 0, 1, 0, 2. Okay, so this is uh, something important to keep in mind that uh, will come and revisit. And the second observation here is that uh, clearly because we work with these uh, very simple signals, we could graphically solve the convolution, kind of take all the steps and find uh, um, the values of the output one by one. But if I have an analytical expression of the signals, then I need to evaluate that double summation for the parts of the shifts where the two signals overlap and therefore their, their product is non-zero.